Hey everyone, Morgan Zients here at JotForm. I am our webinar manager and I will be the host of today's webinar, Advanced JotForm Approvals. Two quick housekeeping items before we get started. Uh, go back to my... <laughs> uh, first, uh, we have disabled chat for this session. So if you do have questions, please enter them into the Q&A. Uh, we've just done that so that all of the questions will be in one place for me to be able to easily monitor at the end of the session. And when we close out with today's demo, we'll have plenty of time to go through Q&A. And I have David Wilson from our support team on the line to help out with that. Second housekeeping item, uh, if you haven't already seen our introducing job form approvals webinar, you'll still absolutely be able to follow along today. Um, you know, I'm going to show some more uh, advanced workflows, but certainly nothing that's so advanced you can't understand it. Uh, but I do recommend checking that out whenever you can. It's a good resource and it points to a number of other resources that we have available as you start to learn more about approvals. So here's our agenda today. You already got a little sneak preview of the agenda, uh, but I'm going to give a very brief overview of using the JotForm mobile forms app to do approvals. And mm -hmm. I'll spend most of the session today in a demo where I'll show a few different examples of how to get started. Uh, sorry, a few different examples of, of how to use workflows. Uh, I will end the demo by showing some of the advanced options that you have available for approvers, as well as what those look like to approvers and where they can find them. And finally, as I mentioned, we'll close with Q&A. All right, so very brief overview of using the JotForm mobile forms app to do approvals. Uh, if you are currently using the app or if you want to or plan to, you can absolutely manage your approvals in the app as well. If you're an approval owner, you will need to create your workflow on a computer logged into your account first. But considering that that screen is a lot bigger than uh, your mobile screen, that probably makes sense to do anyway. Once that's in place, you can go ahead and use the app to keep track of your approvals, see where they are in the process, et cetera. You'll look for that drop down menu at the top of the screen when you log into the app and navigate to approvals. And then you'll see all of the approvals that uh, you have available. And for those who are approvers, this makes it so that they can make decisions on time and on the go. Even the most time sensitive approvals can be done using the app. They'll see their pending approvals waiting for them as well as all of the information from the submission and their options to act on that and make their decision about whether to approve or deny, et cetera. So in that sense, it functions very similar to signing into their accounts uh, on their computer. All right, that uh, is really the key takeaway about uh, the app that I wanna mention at this point. So again, that's just that you can use the app to manage your approval flows. And I'm gonna go out into our demo for the rest of today's session. All right. So a quick refresher or quick introduction for those of you who might be brand new to approvals. Uh, approvals start with a form and your approval flow will kick in once somebody submits to that form. You can add an approval flow in one of two ways. The first is to add it directly to one of your forms. So whether it's a brand new form or one that like this I have in place and want to add a flow to, all you need to do is go into settings and look for this approval flow section and click to create an approval flow here. Your other option on how to get started is back at your home screen to navigate to your approvals tab. And this is where you'll get to do all things approvals. So in addition to creating an approval by clicking the screen button, if you're an approver, you'll see any approvals assigned to you here. Uh, any active approval flows are in the center of the page. And if you need to edit any of those, you can do so by hovering and looking for the edit button. And I'm gonna to click to create an approval to show you how you can get started. So from the approval flow, you have a few ways to get started. The first is a one-step approval, or the middle one in this case, but the first I'm gonna talk about is a one-step approval. 
Uh, this will automatically add in one level of approvals with either approve or deny outcomes, uh, but you can continue to build on that however you need, using that as a starting point to create even the most complex flow, adding in levels of approvals, adding in as many outcomes as you need. When you're starting with a form, this is your option on how to get started. You don't have other options. The system automatically adds in this one-step approval that, again, you can use as your starting point. Here, you also have the option to choose a template. We have over 100 templates available, organized by category, so you can come in, find one that looks good for your purposes, and click to use flow. And then your last option is to start from scratch, which gives you a blank canvas. And that's what I'm going to use for the two examples that I'll show today. Uh, you know, I would love to have been able to show you examples of all of the questions that I've gotten. And of course, for the sake of time, we can't do that. But I've designed these two examples to meet the majority of the questions I've received and to show off all of the different elements that are available here. So my hope is that you'll see something in here that makes sense to you as far as what you need to get started and um, you can take it forward from there. So for my first example here, I'm going to create a parallel approval process. Let's say I am the HR manager for a company and our process is that when somebody requests time off, it comes both to me and their manager to approve and both of us have to approve before that request can go through. So the first thing I'm going to do is move this all the way over and I will make this my HR approval. So that will be me. And we'll assume that uh, all of the default settings for my approval are exactly what I need here. I'm not going to make any changes. For the managers, I'm going to use a conditional branch to tell the form which manager to go to. So on the form itself, you'll see this manager field, which is a dropdown, and we have the three managers listed. So I'm going to set up the flow so that when somebody selects their manager, the form goes to their particular manager for approval. There are three pieces that you need to add in that conditional logic for the flow. So the first is to actually create the logic, which I'm going to do with the conditional branch. The second will be to add in the approval itself, which I'll do momentarily. And then the last piece is to connect the two so that the branch leads into the approval. So this conditional branch piece is really sort of a way station to get to the appropriate manager in this case. And I'm going to open the settings to add in my branches. You can see I add a new branch. And for this, I'm going to say if manager is equal to an, and that's one of my branches, the second branch is if manager is equal to Michelle. And then the final branch will be if manager is equal to Charlene. You can create this logic based on really anything within the form. So you can see when I go to the fields, I can select any field that has content. These two are just uh, pieces of the form. They're not actually fields that you can, you know, that anybody's entering data into. Uh, but I can use any of these and the conditions depend on the field you're selecting. So for manager, I had four options, either empty, filled, is equal to, or is not equal to. But you can see for date, I have a number of other statements as options as well to build my logic. So really you can use this to create flows in any number of ways. And there's no limit on how many of these conditional branches you can create. So I now have my branches in place. The next piece, as I mentioned, is to actually add in the approval. I'm going to make sure that that's um, on the same line as my HR approval, so it's clear, visually speaking, that these are happening uh, at the same time. Actually move them down a little bit, so I have a little bit more room here. So yeah, you can see all of the approvals are at the same space, so these are happening simultaneously. They're parallel approvals. In this case, I'm just going to change the label name to manager approval. And I'm going to change the approver email address to Anne at company.com. She's our first manager. So that has changed automatically. I can just duplicate Anne's to create Michelle's and all I need to do is edit the email address. 
And finally, same thing for Charlene's so that each of our managers has their approval section here. And I will just change this to Charlene. So now I have the logical statements and I have the approvals. The last piece is to connect the two. Uh, first, I'm going to make sure that my form is connected to the conditional branch. And then I'm going to say, uh, in this case, if that first branch, if manager is equal to Anne, if that's selected, then send it to Anne for approval. Second, if manager is equal to Michelle, we wanna send it to Michelle. And finally, if manager is equal to Charlene, we want to send this to Charlene for approval. So now this is set up so that when somebody submits their time off, it goes directly to me as well as directly to their manager by way of the conditional branch showing the form which manager to go to. Now, again, these approvals are happening simultaneously. Um, both of us should be approving independently. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to use the merge branches element to pull the flow forward once both parties have approved. And in your merge branches, you have an option, uh, you have two options to either wait for all branches to be complete or wait for either branch to be complete. In this case, I wanna make sure that both branches are completed before we're sending any sort of notification to the employee that their time has been approved. So I'm going to, again, use this sort of as our way station to the next step. And I'm gonna select approve here. And I will also connect all of these managers into the merge branches so that when they approve and HR approves, the next piece uh, of the flow can kick in. The last piece of this flow that I'm going to add will be an email going out to the employee that their time off has been approved. So request approved. And now that both of those branches are pulled together, uh, I can send this request approved from there. Uh, the last piece would be to end the flow there. And so the flow will end with the email. And of course, if we have to reject for any reason, we can also uh, connect that as well. So while approvals have to come from both of us, rejections will come from either of us, either I as the HR person or the manager can reject. We'll say, we're sorry, you know, for whatever reason we can't accept your request, we can edit the email itself. And then that as well will be the last step if we're rejecting. I would do the same thing for managers as well. I'm just not doing that now for the sake of time, but you know, hopefully that makes sense. So the flow in its entirety is that somebody submits, again, it comes to me and the manager. If we both approve, the employee gets the request approved email. If either of us deny, they'll get a sorry email and the flow will end once that email goes out. So this flow again shows a parallel approval process where two or more parties are approving at the same time. It also uses, again, the conditional branch, which gives you options on how to send your flow forward in any number of ways. For a next example, I am going to show an example of using the if else condition, which is another uh, logic, conditional logic piece that you have available to you. Uh, so the conditional branch, again, makes it so that you can send your flow in any number of ways based on any number of responses or types of response. The if else condition is going to send your form through the process based on whether a single statement is true or false. So it's a little bit cleaner, um, but it does have that, you know, less functionality and less, um, yeah, less ability to uh, do things with it. But it is very nice if you have a true or false statement that you're using. So in this case, uh, I am going to pretend I am a uh, camp counselor for a youth soccer camp. We serve kids sixth through 12th grade. And I am the counselor for the sixth, seventh and eighth graders. And I have a colleague who manages the teens, the ninth through 12th graders. So in this case, I am going to send the form through the flow based on the response to this grade field here. The last example, we used a drop down here. This is just a free form text box or number box. So you can see again that you can build the logic, whichever logic you're using on any of the fields within here. And instead of immediately sending the form to both of us, in this case, I'm going to first add in the if else condition. 
So same as the conditional branch, the three pieces are to create the condition, create the approval, and then to build the connecting piece. So again, in this case, this section is where we would define what the condition is. And in this case, I'm going to say if grade is less than the value nine. So that means that six, seven, and eight will go one way and nine through 12 will go the other way. We'll save that. Next, I can add in my approvals. So first, this will be me, youth uh, counselor approval. And I am going to uh, edit my outcomes here. Again, these can be edited. You can add as many outcomes as you need as well. So we'll have enroll and uh, do not enroll. Hopefully we don't have to turn too many kids away from summer camp, but in the event that we have to, there's that option as well. And again, I'm just going to duplicate this for my colleague, the teen counselor, the settings will be the same. I'll change this to teen counselor approval, and I'm going to update this to be her email address. Teencounselorcamp.com. So now I can use this statement to send the form to the appropriate approver. And I'll say if the statement grade is less than nine is true, it's going to come to me. And if grade less than nine is false, it will go to uh, my colleague here. Again, in this case, I'm going to use the merge branches uh, piece to move the flow forward if both of us approve. So if either of us approve a student for enrollment in camp, the same email is going to go out to everyone who's being enrolled. So we'll have send email here and this will be welcome to camp. Uh, this piece will connect to that, Move that over a little bit. And I will connect uh, both of our enroll options to that again, to the uh, merge branches piece to move it forward. And in this case, we'll uh, change the branch so that if any branch is completed, it will move forward. Also, I'll add in the um, do not enroll folks so that if we have to decline any students, they will get an email as well. So do not enroll. And again, I'll just duplicate that and drag it over so that uh, my colleague has his email in place or her email in place. And uh, there we go. The flow is uh, pretty much complete. The last piece again is to just end the flow so that it's clear that the flow ends once that email has gone out, whether it's a rejection email or an enrollment email. The enrollment email as well, uh, I mentioned, you know, emails can be edited in their entirety. If you wanted to direct people to your camp website for more information, you could use this space to add in that link. Uh, if you wanted to send people to a second job form where they could complete uh, a you know, final agreement, approval to enroll a student, whatever, consent forms, uh, as well as accept payment, for example, you could direct them to the other form. And if you wanted to include anything like uh, first day of camp information on where to drop your students off or camp schedule or anything you need for parents to know for camp, you can upload files here as well. Uh, let's say we actually need a second level of approval. So once either I or my colleague have approved, we really need it to go to the camp director for final approval. It's very easy to make that change or that addition. And you can see I've just kind of dragged and dropped to move those down. And I'm going to do the same thing, drag and drop approval. You can see as I start to drag, um, these plus signs show up as places where I can automatically end this, where it will, or where I can end, add this, where it will automatically incorporate into the flow. So uh, once I get that in the right spot, you can see now, rather than the merge going directly to the welcome, the merge is going to the camp director for approval. And when the camp director now decides to approve an applicant, then they'll get that welcome to camp email. So in the last example, I showed a parallel approval. In this case, we have a sequential approval where once I or my colleague approve, it's going immediately to the next level of approvals. I, I know we've gotten a number of questions about, you know, do you have to send an email as the end result for approvals? 
And it really depends on your flow. So in this case, it doesn't make sense to have that email go out until the very final approval. If you're doing something like a job application where you need to be in contact with the submitter throughout the process, then you might want separate approvals, uh, separate emails to go out along the way. But again, here, uh, just to go through the flow in its entirety, registration comes in, the condition tells it which of us to go to. If either of us enroll, so if I enroll one of my youth and if, or if my colleague enrolls one of their, his, his teens, uh, the merge branch pulls it together to go to the camp director approval. And once the camp director approves, the welcome to camp email goes out. If we have to decline for any reason, the uh, they're getting the worst sorry email. I could also add one of those in for the camp director. And again, the flow ends once those emails have gone out in this case. So, uh, so yeah, those are the two examples that I wanted to show. Again, I know that I can't uh, go into further detail and build the exact things that you're all looking for, but my hope was showing you all of the elements and how you use them, uh, as well as giving you examples of parallel and sequential approvals will give you a sense on how you might get started with building your flow. The last piece that I wanna show here is the advanced options for approvers. And I'm going to use my approval here for that. So I'm going to go into advanced properties here. I did talk about some of these briefly in the last webinar, like allowing comments. I think that's pretty straightforward. Uh, the four last options here, I'm jumping around a little bit on this menu, but the last four options are things that you can do if the approver is not approving in a timely manner. So you as the approval flow owner will be the person to set these. Uh, you can escalate a task, expire, automatically finish, and send reminder emails. And for each of these, you'll be asked to define the time period at which that should happen. So you can see escalate after one or however many hours, days, weeks, or months, or a custom date. And then you'll also be asked to define what action should be taken when that, that time period elapses. So for escalate task, who are you sending it to instead? Uh, maybe if I don't approve in time, we want to send it to the camp director for approval. Expiration date will just expire the task, so there's no additional action. You just set the time period. Automatic finishing, you'll need to decide how the task should be finished. So, for example, if camp is full and we have to launch into planning mode and we don't even have time to go in and do approvals at this point, uh, we can set this to automatic finish with the outcome of do not enroll so that uh, you know the students who've come late or the parents who've tried to register late are immediately getting the message that they are not enrolled. We could even edit the email to say, sorry, campus full. We'd love to see you next year. And then, whoops, lost my menu there. Give me one sec. Uh, the last option, send reminder emails. Again, you're defining when those should go up, but you also have the option to edit that email so that it's very clear to your approver what action needs to be taken. The last two pieces here that I want to talk about are allow reassign, the very first item here, and request more information. I did talk about allow reassign uh, in the last webinar using uh, a vacation as the example. I wanted to talk about it and share another example here because I think that this is another really good use case, this camp example. Uh, so again, if I'm handling the sixth, seventh and eighth graders, let's say I have a 14 year old eighth grader who's come to camp the last two years. She's really good. She's been playing since as long as she could walk. Um, and it really doesn't make sense for her to be in camp and learning with younger kids. We should play her up instead. If allow reassign is enabled, I can send this to the teen counselor. I can include a note saying, hey, she's actually a better fit for your group. And then the teen counselor would be the person to make the approval. And I think saving the best for last um, or the most frequently asked question for last, at least request more information. Uh, I've gotten a number of questions about how you can incorporate uh, this sort of piece into your flow if you need to get more information from the person who's submitting. Uh, and uh, this is exactly where you would do that. No action will be taken on the task if you use the request for more information. So if this is enabled, what your approvers will see is an option for them to request more information, which pops up an email that they can edit. 
the email has a very clear resubmit or submit form link, edit, edit form link, so that it's very clear to the uh, recipient what action needs to be taken. And the email can be edited to specify what additional information you need. In the meantime, rather than making a decision on the task like enroll or do not enroll, or even a decision like ask for more information, this just leaves the task in limbo and no action is taken until you have the information or your approver has the information they need, and then they can go in and make their decision from there. All right, so the last piece here is that I'm going to show those approver options from the approver perspective. So first, let's pretend that I am the parent of a student named student athlete, very creative name. Uh, she is indeed an eighth grader who's 14. And we'll assume that mom fills out all of the information here, consents, et cetera, and then submits the form. Now, if you remember, I'm Morgan and the approver for the sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. So this will come automatically to me. It will look like this. Uh, and again, uh, one thing I, I haven't talked about in this webinar, but did mention last time, you have the option about whether or not to require your approvers to log into JotForm. If you're not requiring your approvers to log in, they can make their decision here in the email. If you are requiring approvers to log in, clicking either of these will take them to their JotForm account. So uh, let me go back to my home screen. So when I log into my account, I can then follow this little red dot trail to get to any pending approvals. So in this assign to me section, you can see that I have two approvals waiting for me to approve and I can hover over and click to view. And here's our submission. If I have everything I need, I can make my decision about whether to enroll or not enroll right away. Uh, I can also use the reassign here that I just talked about. So if I wanna send this over to my colleague, I can send it to team counselor at camp. Uh, I can, again, include a message. You know, she's, we know her, she's really good. Let's include her with the older kids. And all I need to do is reassign and it will go over to the teen counselor to approve or do not approve in this case, or enroll or do not enroll. The last thing that I mentioned, the request more information. So your approvers will find that here. Clicking on that opens an email. Again, it's got a very clear edit uh, form link. And again, you can add it to the email. Uh, so you can include text that explains what additional information you need. And if you want to make sure that you're reminded to come back, you can, or approvers, if your approvers want to make sure that they're reminded to come back, they can snooze, uh, select the time period for snooze. So let's say I think mom will get back to me in about three hours. I can save that. This task moves from my pending approvals into my snoozed approvals. And let's assume it's been updated at this point, and now I can make my decision to enroll. So uh, there we go, that's the entirety of the flow. And again, that's what approvers see. So on that note, uh, I'm done with demos and I am going to open up for Q&A. Uh, we're starting Q&A with a few questions that we've gotten in advance or gotten pretty frequently. So if uh, one of these sounds similar to a question you've asked, but not exact, I've tried to summarize so that we're addressing as many questions as possible. So. Uh, David, I have a few questions for you to get started, and then I will pull from the Q&A. <clears throat> um, so the first question that we've gotten a lot, and we did address this in the last webinar, but I know that this is really important to a lot of people. Um, are you able to add an e-signature? And I know that you can't add it directly to the approval, but David, uh, could you talk more about uh, the workaround for that? Sure. So there's an option in the approval emails or in any sort of step approval or step emails to include an edit submission link, which would allow for recalling the submission data into the form. And then you can do things like fill out additional fields or add signatures to signature fields and make those sorts of updates. There's also the ability to log into an account that has or that is a part of that approval flow. And if you log into the account, either via the inbox view or the tables view, 
you can make those sorts of updates directly in the data or use the edit submission function in either of those locations to be able to edit the submission, add signatures and do whatever else you need and then move on to the approval or denial step or whatever actions you need to take. Great. Um, and I think we have a related question in the chat. Is it possible for a, the first approver to edit info in the form before passing it along to the next approver? Yep, yeah, same exact sort of scenario. You can either have that edit submission link or adjust the data or edit the data directly in the table. And then that information, if those fields are included in the subsequent uh, steps of the approval process, that data would also be included in those approval or denial or whatever other action emails. Great, thank you. Uh, is there a limit to the number of conditional branches that you can include? Uh, I know I talked briefly about that, but and do you want to share a little bit more about that? Sure. So there is no hard limit that I'm aware of. I'm sure if someone went really crazy and tried to add, you know, a thousand sort of conditional steps or something like that, there might be a soft limit somewhere. But the space for creating the approvals and spreading everything out will expand essentially indefinitely. So there is no hard limit for the number that you can add. But again, I'm sure that somewhere along the process, either like memory would run out or it would be too uh, complex for the browser to handle. But again, no soft limit or no hard limit rather. Yeah, I know we've gotten a number of questions of like, I have 100 managers and um, yeah, exactly that. You know, you can do that. Um, I think another limitation might be the amount of time that it would take you to set that up too. So, you know, if, if that really makes sense for you to use this workflow and set up conditional branches, you absolutely can go for that. Um, just, you know, as David mentioned, no hard limits on how many uh, approvals or branches that you can include. A quick side note on that, um, mm -hmm. it might be best if you have that many sort of managers or something to do a bit more conditional logic in the form itself and then map those approvals to a form field rather than to a specific address. So like if they select their manager in the form from a list of 100 managers and then that updates an email field in the form with the manager's email address, it might be easier to then pull that email address instead of you know having a hundred different conditional approvals in the approval flow, have a small condition in the form itself. Great, thank you. Uh, one of the questions from the chat, uh, I have two approvers and I want something to be approved if either one of them approves the request, uh, can that be supported? Yes, um, I believe you actually showed that in your demo that mm. sort of um, if if this person approves or if either of these people approve, then it moves on to the next step. But yeah, definitely possible. Yeah, and that merge branches piece, um, there are the two options there to either require that both branches are approved or make it so that either branch is approved. And if you're using that either branch, it will expire the, the branch that isn't the one approving, if that makes sense. So um, you might think about using the merge branches as part of that workflow as well. Uh, let's see. Um, can you add multiple workflows to one form or can you combine multiple forms into one workflow? No, so it's one sort of overall flow per form and multiple forms can't be used in the same flow. You can reference a separate form in the emails that are sent. So if you wanted to put a link to a separate form or something like that as a part of the flow, you can have them fill out another form, but it wouldn't be possible for that, for the flow in that specific form to reference any content or any actions performed in the separate form. Yeah, I mentioned that briefly earlier as well. So again, that email that goes out once you have made your decision, that is entirely flexible. You can create, you know, add whatever you need to for that. So if you want to use that as a space to send somebody to the next level of forms that you're using, you can do that. 
Uh, there's another question from the chat. Uh, can you set up a flow so that each approver can accept or deny even if an earlier approval had uh, approver had denied? Um, no, essentially once the approve, I mean, you could have another step so that if it did not, it's denied, then it goes to another approver. Um, I believe that's what they're looking for. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think that makes sense. Um, I don't think I have anything to add to that one, but I'd be happy to test it out and, and see how it goes. So, yeah. Um, it's another question from the chat. Where can I create reports and view activity logs related to my approval work, workflows? Uh, the activity logs would be available from the inbox view or the tables view for the form. Um, I haven't checked if they're exportable quite yet, but any sort of approvals or denials or any actions would be listed in either of those two views and the full history would be available. So if Morgan approves something, it would say approved as the action and then Morgan as the person who did it. Yeah, I did check this out the other day and currently um, when you go to print, those do not show up, but yes. So you may have noticed that when I did my approval at the very end of the demo, very briefly on the screen, there was, um, you know, the, the approval itself showed a box at the bottom that was the activity log for that saying that I approved. So any actions that are taken on your approval will show up as an activity log at the bottom there. So if you're requesting more information, it will show up there. Uh, if, you're, uh, if the person you're requesting more information from edits the form or if anyone edits the form, that will all show up there as well. So if you do need to print that, I think maybe the best option currently would be to do a screenshot of that entire page. Just a side note on that one, though, I believe we do have it in the works to make the approval steps in history and actions available to integrations. Um, and when that becomes available, so like if you have a Google Docs spreadsheet integration, for example, the approval actions and steps and everything aren't currently populated into the sheet. But I believe in the near future we will have available the ability to have that specific data sent over via integrations and then it should also be included in data exports as well great good to hear um I, there's another sort of related question that asks if um if there are multiple approvers will approvers be able to see comments from the previous approver and yes so along those same lines you would see comments that any approver leaves as part of the activity log for that approval as well so i just wanted to quickly address that one um i got a number of questions prior to the webinar today about um using approvals to have customers approve something so one of the examples was they're a design firm and they need customers to sign off on a design. Uh, so David, could you talk a little bit more about how that might work? Sure. So rather than mapping the approval step or the step in the process to a specific email address, those can be mapped to a form field. And so you could have similar to how autoresponder emails get sent out to an address entered in the form those approval emails can also get sent out to an address entered in the form. So you just have a field where they can enter their address or their email address, and then you'd map that field as the field or as the recipient for that approval step. Yeah, great, thank you. Um, I know I've um, talked to a few people about that already, but if you do have questions along those lines, um, I have screenshots ready to go. If you uh, wanna email me, I'd be happy to share those. Um, somebody's asking if the camp approval will be added to templates. The two examples that I showed were both templates that we have available in forms. So the form templates are in there. Um, they, I made some very minor changes to those. So if you want to use those forms, you can. The approvals themselves, um, not specifically, I created those from scratch, but uh, 
you, this webinar will be sent out after we should have it up on our website uh, by Friday, hopefully. And you'll get an email with a link to the webinar sometime next week. So I would recommend just kind of, um, you know, rewatching or scrolling forward to that section and just kind of duplicating what you see. Uh, there may be something in the templates, the approval templates that's similar. Um, so you might also want to just go into there and look for like registration templates for approvals as well. Um, let's see. I'm going to. I'm just trying to look through. Um, and one other question that I've gotten pretty frequently uh, is whether, again, rather than sending out an email as the final step of the process for the person you are, um, who, the person who submitted, if you can send them directly to a website or another JOT form. I think you know, we've talked about this uh, a little bit, but just to clarify and reiterate, that email space is a great place to add whatever you want and you can entirely edit it to do whatever you want it to do. So you would still send the email, but the email can directly send that person to a website or another job form or whatever the case may be. Um, so it's a little hard to talk and read Q&A at the same time. So I'm trying to get through um, uh, as many of these as I can. <laughs> Uh, another question, David, can two or more people collaborate on the same approval in the builder? Um, I don't believe so. On enterprise, there's the ability to have a form shared in between accounts, which would allow for multiple people to not only work on the form, but to work on the approval process. But for our standard accounts, um, it's supposed to be one person per account. So there isn't a sort of collaboration feature for the approval flows. Great, thank you. Um, let's see, uh, let's do one or two more questions. Um, can we send the final decision to a printer to print out the, um, yeah, I guess the final decision. Uh, the email could be printed, but there isn't an option to like directly have the decision sent, you know, over a network to the printer instead. It would just need to be printed out via the email that's sent. Yeah, thanks. Uh, all right, so the last question uh, here, and again, I apologize if we didn't get to your question. Um, I'm trying to read through and talk and listen to David's responses at the same time. Um, I will try to follow up with anybody that we missed, and you are always welcome to email me at uh, morgan at jotform.com with additional questions. Uh, one final question. Um, if uh, so, using like the example of uh, sending a payment after approving camp, uh, if the uh, if there's an amount due, is there a way when you send so okay? If we're sending somebody to a new form after they've been approved and we want that form to be the place where we accept payment, is there a way to automatically have the form include what that payment amount should be? So the second form that they would go to. I believe so, but I haven't tested that yet. There's the ability to pass data from one form to another or to pre-populate form fields using URL parameters. So with a fixed amount, Yes, you just have a customized link to the second form with a parameter that has a field being pre-filled with the amount, and then that amount gets passed into the payment field for payment. But I haven't checked to see if you could use like a field ID and have that field ID referenced in that final email. So it could be possible with vari variable amounts. It's definitely possible with specific values. Great, thanks. All right, so at this point, I'm going to wrap us up. Um, again, um, I'll try to respond to you individually if I missed any of these questions. Uh, and again, you're welcome to email me, morgan at jotform.com. Uh, if, um, yeah, if you have any questions or comments, again, this webinar will be available on jotform.com slash webinars, hopefully Friday. And you should receive an email with a link to this recording uh, probably next Wednesday. 
Um, we will also include links to other related resources. So the earlier webinar that I mentioned, the last, the introducing job form approvals, as well as a couple of different blogs that we've written. Um, and uh, hopefully that uh, helps you learn everything you need to know about using approvals. Thank you all for being here today and uh, we'll see you at the next webinar. Bye.